Welcome back to a new episode of Teams in 20. So today, as you've seen on this beautiful slide, we're going to talk about Viva Learning again, but this time we're going to deep dive into some advanced features. Today we have lovely Brett with us to drive us uh, um, through this journey with, with Viva Learning Advanced. So without further ado, over to you, Brett. Lovely. Thanks very much. Um, and appreciate the opportunity to talk to you a little bit more about Viva Learning and some of the advanced capabilities that you may may not have been aware and some of the uh, new additions to Viva Learning that's uh, been added into the service over the past few months or so. So Brett Johnson, um, I'm in our solutions team. Um, I'm badged as an employee experience lead. Um, and then in English, that means everything to do with Viva, of which Viva Learning is one of the parts of the wheel of fortune. So what we've got, just to give you a quick uh, reminder that Viva Learning is one portion of the larger Viva opportunity. Um, there's the three pillars around drive mission and alignment, measuring engaged productivity and enabling a high performance org. And Viva Learning you can see sits in here uh, alongside uh, Viva Connections, uh, Viva Topics has been deprecated, uh, whether or not you're aware of that, but uh, we can talk about that another time. Um, and then Viva Skills, which is something that will be landing um, uh, in and around the summer or the back end of this calendar um, that will kind of uh, enhance the learning uh, capabilities that we've got already within the uh, within the service. So this, this here kind of sets the scene a little bit as to what Viva Learning is. Um, we've got on the left hand side, perhaps a whole bunch of learning resources, uh, LMSs or just other repositories that contain information that people may want to access as part of their learning journey. Uh, it could be as simple as pointing to uh, the likes of stream internally, it could even be YouTube, whatever it may be. You know, there's a whole bunch of platforms where people go and consume content and learn and keep themselves up to date. And certainly some of the conversations I've been having recently is around like that snackable learning, right? So if you've got a couple of minutes here and there, you know, you can then very quickly find the information that you need uh, on your phone, on your laptop, whatever it may be. But it's those short, sharp, efficient learning moments um, that, uh, that we, that we want to try and enhance. So we've got the learning content providers, learning experience platforms and learning management systems. It's a whole plethora of stuff. Um, and then on the right hand side, we've got our work systems. And essentially what we want to do is actually connect the learning experiences into the flow of work uh, of which we spend a lot of our time across uh, certainly Teams, Outlook and the rest of the Microsoft infrastructure. Um, and so Viva Learning is essentially a way in how we can start to enable this integrated learning experience uh, across the Microsoft stack. Um, I'm aware actually that you that there, there was a previous session that went through a little bit of Viva Learning, the, the core capabilities as to what you get uh, across your 365 E3, E5 licensing. Um, and as always, there is a premium capability that you can go and enable uh, if you wanted to, and if you have those licenses or as, as a business case, use case for you to look at that. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, but another key reminder as to why uh, this could be quite exciting is the enablement of the frontline worker. So the frontline worker has typically got um, a phone, perhaps, or at least access to a, a device, maybe on the shop floor, whatever, whatever it is. Um, but Viva Learning and the, and, the, and the capabilities that we have within it um, are available through through the Teams app, which means you get a really nice experience regardless of the screen size. Um, and, you know, again, going back to that snackable learning, it gives you the opportunity to do that. So let's just dive into the architecture a little bit um, and then I'll show you some I'll show you what it looks like in real life. So we can see where we spend our time or where a user would typically spend its time. Um, appreciate that we've got the Microsoft 365 tenant boundary here and there's a whole bunch of capabilities and, and applications that you go and connect to. And Viva Learning is what we're focusing on here. But I guess the key thing to start to um, highlight is that Viva Learning can connect to your internal resources. So it could be a SharePoint online site, for example. You can point Viva Learning to connect into that. And then the resources, whether that be uh, Word documents, PDFs or videos on that SharePoint list, will then be visible into Viva Learning. Um, and then depending on whether you've got additional licenses and subscriptions to these um, external third party learning providers, you can then start to connect those learning repositories into Viva Learning. 
Um, and there's a whole bunch of stuff here that you can see that we've got uh, connectors out of the box. Um, and then if we then wanted to connect into LMSs, learning management systems that you have, um, Cornerstone example, um, then there's the capability of using the APIs in order for the learner records that have been created um, within uh, your LMS to be then visible um, through Viva Learning with the, with the goal of having that single pane of glass that Viva Learning connects to all of the other repositories that, that provide that simple experience. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of um, ways in which you can extend what you get out of the box. Um, I'm not going to go into this too much detail, but is there, is the, this, this slide here is essentially for, for your references, but it's making the point that in your LMS, it could be that you've got your learner records. That's probably where all the reporting is, you know, how long it took somebody to complete it, whether they did it at full speed or not, all of those types of things. So those um, that, 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 that data and the, and the, and the, and the catalogue and the records will essentially still live within the LMS. But what we're doing is connecting Viva Learning into it. So the video or the document is exposed through Viva Learning uh, so, the end, so the end user can, uh, can then complete it in an, in an easier way. So that's kind of the high level overview I wanted to go through. And let me just show you what that looks like in real life. Um, <clears throat> so what I've got here is a couple of personas. Uh, which one is it? Let me just bring it up. So I've got a, an end user um, and then I'm logged on as admin uh, in, a, in a demonstrable environment. So I'm not going to go through it. Um, well, I'll go through it just briefly because there may be some people that weren't on the previous call. Um, but essentially what you get out of the box as part of your core licensing um, is the capability of connecting into LinkedIn to the Microsoft 365 training and Microsoft Learn databases. Now, LinkedIn obviously does depend on whether you've got a LinkedIn subscription. <coughs> it will bubble up um, the kind of the top 150 courses, but that is also based on English language. So you'll probably end up seeing about 60 in there, should you want to turn that on. And if I'm honest with you, if um, it, it's it, it's something that I would encourage you to turn on if you have the subscription. If you haven't, then maybe you consider uh, turning it off because you don't want to be in this situation where courses are bubbled up to people and they don't have the subscription to go and click on it. And then it's just frustration that they can't then complete that course. Um, so LinkedIn is there just to give you an example that you can connect into it. Um, and uh, for those cu customers that have it, have a really good experience with it. And then the Microsoft 365 training and the Microsoft Learn modules there, the uh, uh, Microsoft courses that LinkedIn, uh, sorry, that uh, Viva Learning will connect into um, as part of your E3, E5 licenses. If we were then to take it a stage further, we can then connect into other areas as well. Um, so because I'm logged on as an admin, what I wanted to do was to show you the back end of this as to what it looks like, um, because as an end user, you're probably not necessarily aware of all the capabilities that you could have. Um, so if we look at admin, um, we can see here that this example is connected to those three repositories, which I've just been talking about, which you saw, um, which you saw here, uh, LinkedIn Learning, Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Learn. So it then is possible to go and add additional providers. Now, this will depend on whether you've got an active subscription, um, but you can see here that these are the out of the box connectors that you can connect into these third party learning resources. Uh, one of them is SharePoint. And as I mentioned, you can then you can you can configure Viva Learning to uh, to a SharePoint site. Um, and then you've got kind of a little in-house solution if you don't have an LMS or you don't have your uh, subscriptions to third parties. Um, what one of the new capabilities, which is quite interesting, is the, uh, ab the ability of creating learning paths and then subsequently publishing academies. Now, a good a good kind of use case for this is new starters, right? Uh, you might want to go and create a, a learning path. So I've created a learning path here for, um, for, for Frontline. Um, and what I can do is go and edit that and we can see a nice little picture. And then the first 30 days. So if you've just been onboarded into the organization in a, in a specific department, a specific area, it's then possible for you to create a learning path. So I've just randomly se selected a whole bunch of courses, a combination of LinkedIn and Microsoft Learn. Um, and this one here actually is just a URL out to YouTube. So what you can do is create this learning path. We've got the first section one, which is the first 30 days. And then section two is the next 60 days. Um, and then you can create that, or sorry, save that learning path. 
And then what you can then do is go and create academies, which can then have multiple learning paths within it. Um, and this is something that we've done in, internally within Microsoft, actually, and how that manifests itself. Um, you can see here that I've got an academy. It's called Frontline. Um, and so here I am just started within the organization. Um, and I can see this published uh, learning path. Um, I can then go through this. It takes 18, 20, 20 minutes. I can see the amount of time it takes. So if I've got it on a break or schedule some time in my calendar to do the, the learning. And then I could go and mark these as complete, which is great. I won't give that any stars because I didn't do it very quickly. Maybe we give that one four. Um, and then you can see here I can bookmark it. So actually it's quite useful. Maybe use that as reference for, for later on down the line. Um, and then we've got the capability of actually then sharing it with my teams or, or, or copy the link and sharing it directly. So academies is a really nice way of providing a structured learning journey for either new people into the organization or if they've changed roles and they need to get up to speed. And um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And just to let you know, internally within Microsoft, we have an academy, um, unsurprisingly, around AI and Copilot. There's an awful lot of information to consume. Um, so what's been what's been happening is for, for us internally, we can then go to the, the academy. We can then see all the Copilot um, learnings that we're, we're encouraged to do. Um, and then as a result of that, we've got a nice, easy way of getting to that learning quite quickly. So Academies is a really nice additional uh, capability if you weren't aware of that. And that can be um, documents that come from SharePoint or the third party learning providers or the LMS. Right. Remember, Viva Learning, that single pane of glass to see and connect to all of your learning repositories. Um, if I just go back to the admin center again, just because, again, it's probably not an area you see very regularly, if at all. Um, we've got the interests. So these are the interests that you set and how that there manifests itself is what you see here. So on the home page of Viva Learning, we've got pick your interests. We can see more. We can see all this stuff here. That is essentially controlled by the manage interests here. So if you need to create things that are like industry specific, for example, customer relevancy, you can then adjust and change your interests as, as, as to what we've got. Um, the feature sets, um, this is essentially what will appear across the top. So if there's key learning that you need to uh, publish, we can, we, you can do that via feature, um, feature sets. And then we saw that we've got these academies and you can have multiple academies. It's not just one. You can have many of them uh, depending on, um, on, on what it is you want to uh, promote. And those academies can be based on permission. So if you've got a HR academy versus an operations academy versus finance, for example, then that, that's absolutely possible to do. Um, one of the new capabilities is around learner records. I think I saw a question pop in. Um, so at the moment, um, you know, I'm just going to search for Patty. It's a demo environment. If I click on Patty um, and then export that, what you will then see are those uh, learner records that Patty has marked complete. Uh, so if we go back to the frontline um, academy and she completes it and, and, and marks it as complete then you'll see the learner record here there's not much in it because it's my demo environment but you can or what we've uh, what we've got now is the capability of starting to export learner records now to be clear this doesn't replace the lms capabilities right this is to work in conjunction with it um arguably the uh the, the reports and the and the exports that you can get here um, are not going to be quite as rich as to what you've got for your LMS. But if you don't have an LMS and you're doing this completely natively with Microsoft 365, then there's the possibility that this will um, provide a, a suitable um, solution for you. Uh, we talked about the learning paths. There can be many, many learning paths and then there can be multiple learning paths within an academy. So it's just think of the academies and learning paths as just a way of uh, curating and then subsequently displaying the content based upon your job function or position within the organization. Um, other settings, not necessarily that important language. And then we've got some reporting. Um, so the reporting is essentially based upon the usage of Viva Learning and what people are doing. Um, and again, you're not really going to see anything here because this is my demonstrable environment. But the point here is that so probably since when you last looked at Viva Learning, there's been a lot of additional capabilities in the back end that do provide a lot more um, capability that's that's frankly useful for you. Uh, we can see the adoption, engagement and whether things are being shared around the organisation and whatnot. So there's quite a lot of capability that's here. Um, what I wanted to show you when I got distracted slightly earlier is that um, I, I, we're in uh, we're in a team here. 
um, and we're on a specific channel. And then what you can do, I don't know whether you're aware of this or not, but as uh, you can add Viva Learning as a component of that channel. Um, and then there is the frontline learning path. And if I click on that, and just as an example of an end user, you can then go and complete that if you wanted to. So that's essentially the quick fire overview of um, of the Viva Learning with regard to more of an admin view. I hope that was useful. I was told that 20 minutes goes pretty quickly. It sure does. Um, so let me uh, let me leave that be. Um, I don't know if there's the other slide at the end we want to go to. Let me just put that yes. up. Let me take control. We do have a few questions, uh, Brett. In sure, the let chat. me go and have a look. So the first one is, do we still need to have an LMS in the back end too? Um, if you've got an LMS, the answer is you probably want to keep it. As I mentioned, the reporting and the capabilities that we have natively within Viva Learning isn't going to replace your LMS um, at the moment. Um, there is a roadmap. So if you go on to uh, if you do a search on Microsoft Roadmap, Viva Learning is published so you can see what's coming. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's to replace an LMS. It's to work in conjunction with. Um, last year, we introduced my learning path. So is investment moves away from uh, making to Viva Learning? Yeah, Viva Learning is kind of where it's at, right? So because that capability exists and it's specifically about learning, you know, there there is always going to be that crossover between SharePoint native capabilities and Viva Learning. Um, and the, the investment uh, moving forward will be in and around Viva Learning. Uh, can you report on the completion? Uh, you, so natively within uh, Viva Learning, yes, is the answer to that. But as I've mentioned, if you've got an LMS and you're connecting Viva Learning to that, it's more than likely that you will continue to use the reporting from the LMS at this moment in time. Uh, can anyone develop the content or is that an admin or a highlighter? So the content, uh, forgive me. Um, so uh, is that, if that's the Learning Academies and the the features that we've just been going through, um, there's a permission model. So you've obviously got your global admin, but then you can give your learning leads permissions specifically to Viva Learning. Um, and then they will be the ones that will be able to create the academies and the feature sets. So that's possible. Um, and yes, the academies is part of the premium component. Um, how do I add my own learning material into Viva Learning for my own department? Um, so again, probably what I would do in that instance, uh, Mystery, is use SharePoint. Um, and you could create a SharePoint site, put your content within SharePoint, and then configure uh, Viva Learning to talk to that SharePoint URL. And then that would be then visible within the Viva Learning application. And that's part of your E3, E5 licensing. Awesome. That was amazing, Brett. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a lovely rest of your day. Cool. Thank you. Bye-bye.